Hey guys, this is JT from JT Corn Ring. Welcome to another episode of Corn Ring Talk, where we discuss corn rings and the corn ring crafters. Today we talk to Dave from Corn Ring Craft and Fold Corn Rings. We will learn about the corn ring crafter, his work, and the impact he wants to leave on the craft. Hey, let's give a special shout out to the tool companies that make our job easier. Peppy Tools and King Corn Ring Tools. Check out their websites. And we are live. How you doing? This is another episode of Corn Ring Talk. This is JT, and I'm interviewing a wonderful guy, a corn ring crafter at heart, the wonderful Dave from Fold Corn Rings and also Corn Ring Craft. Dave, how are you doing? I'm doing great, JT. Thanks for having me, man. Man. Really exciting. Absolutely awesome. You still there, Dave? There we go. Yeah, let's see what just happened there. That's interesting. Give me one second. Okay. So, guys, Dave is on IG. You can check him out on Corn Ring Craft. If you're not on there already, um, you'll see some of his beautiful rings. But the one thing that he does is give great instructions. All right, hopefully that brings me back. Wow. Okay. <laughs> there you go. He's back. He had. <laughs> I my got a text, point. and I I went to brush it out of the way, and I brushed myself into an into oblivion. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. It happens though. Believe me. We had. Let's talk about who is in the audience right now. We have Budget Bullion Stacker. He's saying hello. We have our friend here, Lion Punch Forge. Is in the house. Um, we That's also Chris. have Don Manley. Thank you, Don. Thank you so much. He says UK ready. Thank you so much. Um, we have Michael M. All the way from Canada. <laughs> and you know, my everyone, all my um friends, they always make sure the man, the myth, the forehead. <laughs> <laughs> Michael M's always keeping it real, and also budget bullion. How you doing, my friend? And we also have the one and only Nick McLean from Badlands Coins. And we have Skip King from wow. King Coin Rings Tools. How you doing, Skip? Thank you so much for joining us. And Arb Jonathan, all the way from Norway. Thank you guys for joining us, man. You're going to have, definitely have a great show. We have Dave here. Dave, for those who don't know, and for those who do, remind us, who's Dave? <laughs> well, uh, first of all, I want to say I'm so it's such an honor to be on your show and be part of this community because I'm new to this community. Awesome. I made my first coin ring. Uh, and I, it was just a, a hot mess, but I made it September 9th of last year. So I am wow. not the grand master. I'm the new guy on the beginning of that trajectory. Uh, just here to share how I'm doing with it. I mean, I don't, you know, I, I don't have all the answers. And mm -hmm. I saw some names on there. I was just, Skip's doing something for me for my weird American press. He's so, everyone in this community is so cool. Uh, right. But, you know, I, I'm just trying to learn and, you know, chase perfection and get good at coin ring making, right. focused on coin ring. So September will be your first year or second year? coming into so yeah so this september will be one year i'm not even one, one year. I'm a year baby now you're going how did we get this guy on the show <laughs> security <laughs> security <laughs> oh man but it's definitely been on i'm telling you I, I stumbled across your page um i think i just i stumbled across it i don't know how i got to your page but when i when i when i got to it and this is the corn ring craft page i learned more and 10 posts than I did in months only because you took so much care and in instructions and you showed it and, it and it made it, it made it make sense. I like even down to the most difficult part to me was always using a deburring tool to clean out the reeded edge. And you, you gave me a, gave a tip. I said, gave me a tip. Like it was only me, but you gave a tip that help shave time off my corn ring creation. And then the other ones from putting the punch in the right place. 
all these things, these tips um, helped out the process so much. And I said, man, this page is going to be one of my favorites. And instantly I made sure I put the notifications on because I wanted to be up and on everything that you did. So how did you stumble across Corn Rings in September? Oh, wow. That's a great question. So, um, I, you know, I, my whole life, my mother used to call me a project tier. My whole life, I got to be making stuff. And I bet a lot of you are like that. I'm, mm -hmm. a, I'm a maker of something. So I was doing, well, I made furniture. I got a whole history of stuff I made, but now I'm in a smaller place. So I was making paracord bracelets. I was making pendants. I was sawing out of silver. I was doing all the stuff. And, you know, people liked them. You know, they were great. And then one day I, I was on, I think I was on YouTube and I just saw somebody talk about coin rings. So being that I have no sense at all, I thought, <laughs> well, I can do that. So, you know, I, I, I grabbed, you know, one of these, everybody remember these? A the mandrel. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I grabbed, I grabbed a rawhide mallet. I didn't even know you were supposed to have a special teardrop mallet <laughs> and didn't even, in fact, this is this dirty old thing I've had for, you know, 40 years. Cause I've been oh, making wow. stuff forever and a piece of PVC. And I started just hammering and, and heating it up and pounding right. on it. And I, I started to flip it. it. First of all, also, I started with a pure silver a double eagle. Mm -hmm. and why not? You know, that's what, <laughs> silver, silver such a beautiful material, right? right? So it, it did me well because it was like butter. And eventually I got something that looked like a Grecian urn. Yes. You know, you know what I mean? It was mm -hmm. like... But dude, I was I had the bug. I loved it. And I, I have a great community of people I work with. And I took it to work and I showed it to a guy. Dude, this was a hot mess. <laughs> but I said I think I sent you a picture of it. I anyway. did get the picture. <laughs> and I, I was so proud of it. You know, he would nobody would have said anything against it because I was all like, oh, look at this. Right. And he said, Can you make me one? Right. And that's when I went, uh, nay, yeah, maybe. And then I discovered Jason. I don't want to go too long here. And mm -hmm. I found an old video of Jason in like a dark room. I mean, right. You can tell us where that was. It's not. He actually had a mandrel <laughs> and a hammer. Did you, did you see that video of his? Right. I did. I did. <laughs> and I, I just went from there. Go ahead. For me, um, I, I stumbled across that, that video because Scala has helped me. I mean, sorry, Jason has helped me with the process, like what tools to get. Scala helped me to get my tool list together. Um, so it was out of the, those two. Jason had the tools. He kind of fo focused more on what he created. Um, but Scholar's videos helped me do it from the mandrel and the mallet from, from that to getting my first set. So now you stumbled across corn ring making. You got your first one out. Now you had a coworker ask you to make one. How did that process go? <laughs> Well, it went a lot better because, you know, what I realized is I took a double eagle and punched a half inch hole in it. Oh, no, I drilled a hole. You, you right, remember okay. that picture of me? Drill First, just just real funny story. So the way I figured out to do it is I domed it because okay. I had a dapping block from my other crap. So right. I domed it and then drilled it. Yeah, and Jackson, I was when Jay when Jason saw that, he's like, that's a good idea. I, I never thought of that back then when we were still like, you know, cleaning up the blood after we drilled <laughs> holes and coins. Right. Because it helped it sit. You know, I put on a hockey puck and it kind of stuck down there. Mm -hmm. But the next one, I realized, oh, my band's too wide. You know, you can't do a three-quarter width band without some problem. Uh -huh. So it actually came out beautiful, and he is still wearing that ring as his wedding ring. Oh, wow. Yeah, he I found the year of his coin. It was another walk-in lib. Mm -hmm. uh, well, a, a double eagle, uh, pure silver liberty. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I wasn't going to give a quote-unquote customer of any kind anything I wasn't proud of. So it, it turned right. out good, and he's... He was my inspiration to get started. And then, you know, it went from there. Have you ever went back to him to redo the ring? Yes, actually. Okay. I, I spiffed it up and just because it, it, it was pretty good. I I have, I have pictures of it. There, were, there was nothing really wrong with it. The detail was all there. Uh, I might have over annealed a little bit. You know, I finally discovered that just the last few months that pure silver will get granular. Right. So it had a little bit more texture than I would like today. But then he was, he used to play Santa for his kids. So I found a, a silver uh, round, pure silver round with Rudolph on it. And I made him a Merry Christmas ring. It's just a, here, buddy, you were my first customer. Awesome. There's just some love for you. And he wears that around the holidays as his wedding band. It's, it's funny because um, I talked to my cousin this morning. 
And um, she was one of one of my first faithful um, customers. Um, it was her um, wedding. And so she, she contacted me. She found out I was making rings. And she contacted me and says, cousin, I want you to uh, make me and my husband's um, wedding band. And I was like, oh, great. This is awesome. And um, I did see them wear it at a at my cousin's, um, another cousin's um, wedding. And I was like, man, they still got these bands on. And I thought about it I, um, just this week. And I said, you know what? I'm going to contact her. And I'm going to say, Kelly, she just got into the chat. Kelly, I'm going to remake your rings, you know, because I've gotten a little better. And I, I'm thinking to myself, it would guarantee it look better than what I gave you because <laughs> you deserve it because you still faithfully win them, you know. And I think that is um, it's, it's something that we got to look into because we had those faithful early customers. What do you think about that? Do you, like, do, you, uh, do you think that maybe you could, you know, send something out to them to – to thank them and give them a gift. What do you think about that process? Oh yeah, and I mean, it, there might be a couple of them on tonight or, or or today and watching later, but you know, they also enabled me to learn the craft because early on, they would it, I, I'd go, they'd be like, "How much? How much?" Because you know, people don't want to just and I'd go, "Hey, just pay for the coin because some of those coins are expensive." Like it I is. with, like I right from the beginning, I gravitated to big, chunky, expensive coins, mm -hmm. and uh, I probably did. Oh God my first 80 rings through these, my friends and coworkers who really helped support me to learn. Yeah. And I made a couple twice. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I made a, you know, I messed up a couple and uh, I went to resize one, you know, for instance, a beautiful, probably the best Morgan I ever made, uh -huh. at least in the early days. And I pushed it right into the press, you know, like trying to resize it. I crunched it out the bottom and right. ruined it. So I had to do it. So, but they really were my supporters. And any of those people now, if they call me and go, hey, you know, I need a ring for my daughter or my son. I'm like, dude, I got you. And they get, yeah. you know, they get that special pricing. Most that. definitely. I agree with that. You know, um, Nick McLean from the chat, he says, LOL, every few months you learn some new tricks, then suddenly all your past work looks bad in comparison. <laughs> that is the truth. Um, I look true. at some of the things from the past and I'm like, oh my gosh, what did I do? Um, yeah. I keep that in my mind because my, my first postcards that I would send to my customers were my first four coins that I, that I would start selling. And that was just to remember that, hey, where I came from. And I'm not that far away from that now, but <laughs> I realize I've learned so much. And once again, to talk about your page. So this part of the interview, I want to talk about the craft. What made you take this perspective or take this approach into corn ring crafting? Well, so what happened was I'm so fascinated with, with coin ringing. I'll talk about that in one second, but I had my fold site where that's my menu for coins. If you go to fold uh, coin ring, underscore coin rings, you'll see a menu of all the, of all the coins I, I fold that I make. And I used to also talk to the crafters. Oh yeah, we're doing this and look at this thing I screwed up and look at that. And pretty soon customers are like, wait, what are you, what happened? You know, and it wasn't a good mix, right? Mm -hmm. So I created about two months ago, I created Coin Ring Craft as a separate site. It links back to Fold, but mm -hmm. Fold doesn't have any visibility to Coin Ring, cra uh, to, uh, Coin Ring Craft. So okay. Coin Ring Craft is just for us to talk about the behind the scenes. And that's when I met you and other people because it's just, I might put a picture of a ring up there if it's like the answer to a question, yeah. but it's not my beauty shots. It's usually, I'll even show you usually the inside or a screw up or a place it could be better. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just a natural, like, look, I will give anyone unsolicited advice on anything. Mm -hmm. Trust me, I have no fear. That's a joke, but I mean, I will. So <laughs> I like, you know what I mean? Because I like it. I, you know, I believe we get better through feedback. Yeah. And when you guys tell me things, I get better. So yeah, that's, that's how I started getting into the, um, you know, the exchanging ideas side of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. It makes sense because I think that to me, that's a great approach. I mean, you, you know that you, you are presenting something to the customer. But at the same time, you're saying, hey, guys, let me show you what I'm going through through my journey. 
And that's how I kind of take it. I don't see you as saying this is the best way to do it, my way or the highway. I feel that you're saying, hey, this is what makes my, my process easier. Here, take a look. And I felt that way when it was about stamping my, um, my personal stamp on my coin. You did it prior to folding the coin. Right. The greatest idea ever. I tell you, a light bulb went on my head, and I thought that was the best approach. And um, how did you come across that? Or did you did you learn it from another crafter? No, I just, when I looked at it, I was like, okay, I'm not going to sit that on a mandrel and take something flat and put it against something round. And I'm, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm trying to get better at stamping all the time. I mean, what what's magical about coin rings is also what makes them, you know, interesting to work on. And so... You know, the first time, you know, you, now this doesn't happen anymore, but before COVID, you know, I'd wear a couple of rings and then someone says, oh, I like your ring. And I used to just take it off and put it in their hand and they'd go, I'd go, it's a coin. Look, it's made from a coin. And they'd almost always be this moment where they go, oh my gosh, you know, something magical happens where they're like, and then the very next thing out of their mouth is, how do you do that? Uh -huh. And that idea that you can take something flat, turn it into a cylinder and preserve it gives you some advantages because... You couldn't mint a coin on a cylinder. Imagine if you went to the mint and go and said, hi, here's here's uh, 800 cylinders. Would you engrave them inside and out, please? Mm -hmm. So the fact that it starts out fl uh, flat, it just gave me the thought of, I'm going to do just what the mint does, put anything on it. Now, it does stretch it, and it does mm -hmm. do some weird things to stuff sometimes. Okay. Right? But, um, uh, you know, it just, it just became obvious to me that, like, laying it flat was going to be the way to get it on there and then bend it. Now tell me, tell me about that um, when you first did it, um, because I want to talk about. I always like talking about the problems and how we troubleshoot. So the yeah. first time that you did that process of putting the stamp, handmade handmade stamp, and also your signature um, stamp, which is the anchor, which I, which I absolutely love. Um, when you, how did you work yourself through the problems, the issues? Yeah. So the first thing I noticed is that when you stamp, which I have one right here, mm -hmm. you're holding that stamp up and you're tipping it. And then you're taking something like this and hitting very close to your hand, almost anything can happen. Mm -hmm. I, even if you get your eye right over the top of it, mm -hmm. you don't know what's gonna happen when you hit it. So that was a big challenge for me. So. I don't know about anyone else who's done stamping, but I ruined a lot of stuff stamping. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So then I discovered on Etsy a little product that holds, some of you guys have seen on my site, that holds the stamp for you. Mm -hmm. And that's just made all the difference. You get an absolutely flat, you know, perfect stamp every time. And, and at first I was just eyeballing it, made some mm -hmm. mistakes there too. Like right. if you look at some of my early rings, I'll say this to the crafters, that Egyptian ring where I put a letter in the sun. It's a little off center. Yeah. Man, imagine how I felt. It's a little off center. Then I went, hey, I wonder if I drew it on there with a Sharpie first and stamped right over that. So it was just a process. So it, I would say it mm -hmm. was that little jig, which I'm having him remake it. Uh, so I'm going to be, there's going to be more coming on my site to that. The one that he made had some issues. Okay. And so I'm communicating with the guy on Etsy that does that and told him, hey, this is what we really need. Um, and so he's he's upgrading that product right now, uh -huh. but it's it's a it's a great product. Um, and then uh, also Sharpie, like put your Sharpie, like draw your anchor, and then lay it right on top. And, and that's that's what I did. And then you know you even get into these big ones eventually. Yeah. Okay. Oh wow. And that what that does just and I'm just gonna say this real quick. Mm -hmm. What that does is that allows you to put a like a vine around the ring mm -hmm. see that yeah now that goes around the whole ring because when i stamp that flat right then that vine goes around and, and then it's magical people are like how are you doing that how'd you stamp all the way around does that make that's sense nice. that's nice now and i sell a lot of this ring people love this little ring anyway. i love it I, I, i'm gonna show them that up close now do you use your 20 ton press with that no, with uh, oh yeah, with the, with this one, yes, because yes. Uh, and I rotated a quarter turn each time. Basically, what I do is I turn this upside down, 
I put the coin on and I use packing tape, which centers it. And also uh, make sure you punt. You could do it with a six ton. I'm, okay. I'm pretty sure you could do it with a six ton. Try it, you know. But um, I put it on there. I always punch the hole first. My engineering friend pointed out to me that if you have less surface area, you're going to increase the pressure. Does that make gotcha. sense? Makes sense. And something on that 20 ton, I used, I had that Harbor Freight press and then, you know, I got the, the Bonnie Dune, but um, you can get on Etsy, you can get a foot for that thing that is a game changer. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll shoot it to you after and you can link it. Yeah, please Absolute do. Game changer. It's made by um, Karen. Uh, but anyway, I'll, I'll send a link. It, she has a few little parts to tweak that uh, press that are absolutely amazing. You press on the stainless steel flat uh, um, foot, and it's exactly like a, a coin anvil. And it's, okay. so you get this nice wide area like we do on the heavier presses. Does that make right. sense? Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. I want to show some of your, um, your rings. So um, show how beautiful they are here. Um, and this is what I wanted to, to show, how you have your anchor here. Do you see that clearly? Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'll make sure that. I and show that's it. that's interesting because I use the uh, the rereader for that. You know, I love. Uh, do you mind if I talk about this a little? Sure. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I I like the reeded edge. I mean, reading is such a beautiful part of coins, right? So I was like, well, why not read the whole ring? I'm not saying this is the end all be all. This is my second custom coin that I've made into a ring. So I'm just getting started here, but I use the product called the rereader to put that read in and then when you expanded the coin it evened out like that so it looks like you know like see how it looks like a line of little tiny cigarettes there now like perfect right. corrugation so i was really yeah. happy with that and then it creates that band which i decorated this is real nice this, this is the one you've done um not so recent but last week correct yeah oh yeah pretty pretty recently because that's all a product of me making my own coins now yes absolutely wonderful we have here what you was talking about prior, what you want to try to show us. Right. That's a vine wrap on a quarter. And wow. man, that takes that ring to the next level. So let's yes. talk a little bit about the business. Mm -hmm. When you sell a quarter, people want a quarter ring. People want to pay, you know, 30 bucks. Right. When you sell a ring like this, you're going to get up in the higher in the higher numbers. And uh, they love, I, you know, I have people, this is a very popular ring for, you know, women love this ring because it's pretty. And yeah. you can take a pretty run-of-the-mill quarter, you know, silver quarter. And um, I've gotten better at preserving that year, by the way, moving it in a position that shows that year better. But uh, it it, uh, it really ups your value with very little labor. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely wonderful. I actually love this here. Um, we have this here, one of my favorites. Um, you did have a teaching moment when it came to this ring as well. Can you share that? Yeah, let me mention Skip right here. So okay. this is something I'm still challenged by, getting those straight edges. If my friend Griff from England is on here, we talk about this all the time. And it's because I use a you-know-what ton of heavy Teflon tape because I'm OCD about that detail. So mm -hmm. when you use a lot of it, you can get this little flaring at the bottom. I just want to acknowledge that on this ring. It fits great. It's beautiful. I, I love it. I'm not happy with it, but I'm working on that. And I ordered those from Skip. He's making me a custom uh, plate uh, for that. But I think you ordered them too, right? The wall straighteners? Yes, I just ordered mine. Right. So I, I, you know, and I'm not getting paid by anybody. Love you, Skip. Paid full boat. I don't care. Right. But I, I just want to say these are products I love. Um, this yeah. ring here is very tricky. I made several of them, obviously. And then I realized you've got to be very intricate with the size of the hole that you punch. Right. And lay it out carefully. This ring actually starts out almost, it's around, right? It almost always starts out a little off center. Believe it or mm. not, it's almost always. So what you do is you get that perfect hole that meets that border. You can see what, that. What size hole would you recommend? That is a seven eighths, I believe, on this okay. one. But you can go one smaller or two. So... I made one that uh, for my friend Crystal, which I think she's listening. I call her the warrior princess. She likes the word warrior, but I'm, I don't think she's too fond of princess. But um, <laughs> just wanted to shout her out because she's just an amazingly brave young lady. Awesome. Um, and she's fighting a good fight right now. Uh, but anyway, I, uh, I, I I had to get it down to a size five so I couldn't go because she's tiny. I couldn't go this wide. But mm -hmm. when you cut this hole, 
then you've got to look at it with your deburring tool and, and kind of deburr in one direction until you center the hole on the pattern. Wow. That's how you get it perfect. Does that make sense? It makes sense. So I, I can't so a really little bit of hand skill. Like you sit and you just do that bottom half, like you're scooping out a like an oyster. You know, you just do that mm -hmm. bottom half, then you go around once and you do that bottom half, then you get a you get a truly centered image. And I and I'm gonna um make a point because when I do this coin ring, this is um the Aztec calendar, correct? Yes, sir. Silver. Yeah, silver Aztec calendar. Uh, one of my favorites. Um this this ring here, I turned two coin two um I made two coin rings from this one coin. And that. one thing I loved about it is that when I did a pendant out of it, you can see the all the beautiful detail. But I did recognize when I seen this on your page that it was not completely showing the all the detail. And this is why it made me pay attention to this here. Uh, I think this is one of the, my, my favorites because it really shows the great patina in this um this ring here, because and it shows off the beautiful detail. So you did a great job on this one here, most definitely. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Um, this here is um a Canadian um coin here with Elizabeth II on the obverse side. Can you um tell me a little bit about this one? Yeah. So this is where I finally. It, this was a, a lighter, smaller coin. This is the 150th year. It's called a hoon. Uh, honor our, oh gosh, I'm not going to remember. Uh, honor of our nation, mm -hmm. hoon. They, they're like, you know, they have a loon and a tune and a hoon. And this is a pure silver coin, but it's smaller. And when I got in there with my torch, you know, I'm buzzing along. I'm an expert coin ring maker now. <laughs> and I got the ring done and I was like, what the heck happened to the surface of this ring? And a lot mm -hmm. of you guys that have followed me saw that I obsessed, probably blocked me for a while because I was obsessing about this, <laughs> um, <laughs> about this granularity and I was talking to experts and, but I, I really did figure it out. So this one is a lot better and it really involves just with silver, you guys being super careful with the temperature you hit with mm -hmm. annealing because it turns out without getting into the whole white paper about it, it turns out that when you get it too hot, it starts to form larger grains and that's going to start to form on the surface. In the form of so reticulation. Really, yeah, exactly. I think a lot of names for it. Reticulation is, is a couple different things, but anyway, yeah, but you're right. Mm -hmm. It's reticulation. It's, it's really larger granular structure. Okay. Um, when you compress the ring, the, just like the surface tension of, of water or foil will crunch up. That can be a factor too, because the surface is so soft it starts to go boop, 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 like fold like a beer can, but just on mm -hmm. a very small level. So there's a lot going on here. But anyway, I love this ring because, uh, and so do my Canadian customers now. This has been a big seller um, because look at all the cool stuff it has. Yes. You have the pine trees, you have the moose, the beaver, the canoe, a lot of detail. Right. And I also yeah. wanted to point out the R of right. in the middle of this. As so well. interesting, interesting thing about two months ago when we got hit with COVID, um, and I'll talk about this in a minute if you want me to, but I want to have a full sample set because I want to be showing my stuff to stores, right? Mm -hmm. So I would, when you order a ring, investing in my business, I'm ordering two coins. I'm making one for my sample. That's my initial R. That's the R one that's in my sample case now. Okay. And then I have one that I give the customer and that's going to be their initial. Okay. So you just happen to see the R there. So this is kind of upside down because of the moose to see the reed is down. Yes. Let's see on the next ring here. This right here is a, a beautiful ring just depicting a, um, a dragon. Yeah, this is the not so classic um, uh, one angel from the Isle of Man. The classic one you do, uh, the, uh, the archangel um, Michael is looking to his left. This has this is the newer one, which a lot of guys avoid to ring because it has some challenges to it where he's looking right. And uh, so I decided to make one and, and compare them and show you what the differences are and how you get the best out of this ring. And, and it, I, I really like this ring. And now I've had people order it with a preference over the other one, which never happened before. Yeah. Awesome. Let me see one here. And this is another monogram in the middle. And this is what I, I, I liked, I wanted to show 
how you put um, the monogram, place it right in the middle. Um, is this personalized for a customer? Oh yeah, that that was for uh, my customer, uh, a prey datum and mundo. He was he, so. What I do with my customers is I really get to know what they want. It's not a matter of hey, you want a liberty, you want a this, you want a that. There's none of that in what I do. Right. I'm like, what are you into? You know, I notice you're wearing a skull. What's that mean to you? And this guy's into pirates. So mm. I'm like, let me do some research. So I I found this prey datum and mundo. You guys have seen this coin. It's a pure silver round, and. Uh, in the middle is the skull and crossbones. And you think, oh, wow, you're just gonna lose all the good part of it. But then I started looking at it and it had these sabers going all the way around. I go, well, those are gonna all just stand up straight and wrap around the whole ring. Like, you, I know you guys know this, but I've learned in this last year, you really have to think of the coin as a ring. Right, yes. And yes. ask yourself what's gonna happen. That's right. And when the I saw that process. blank, what's that? The planning process prior the to planning me. planning process of what makes a good coin for a ring. And then, um, then I saw this space and I was like, man, this would be, make, be a great signet, right? Because I can put that letter right there awesome. uh, in between those. It just like that, I think you showed it uh, to me earlier. You have that guy hammering, right? That mm -hmm. coin. Didn't you have a, a coin of a guy hammering? Oh, maybe that was Griff. It was that my was friend me. Griff. Yeah. But anyway, like he could see in this coin that you would still see the guy swinging the hammer. You'd still see the anvil, like the important components were mm -hmm. going to come through. Um, yeah. Yeah. Awesome coin. Awesome design. I love this. One thing I wanted to point out, the fact that you do take the time out to personalize your rings to your customer. Most definitely. Absolutely beautiful. And thank you. You're going here. So let's talk about that process, um, Dave, if we could. How do you search out your customer? How do your customer find you? Yeah, so um, like right around the holidays, you know, when I just was getting started, I got overwhelmed. Uh, I had like 60 orders right before Christmas. A lot of them were for quarters. A lot of, I was reaching out to people like uh, Jamie, you know, at Midnight Joe and like just trying to find out what she does because she mm -hmm. has like an assembly line, you know. Yes. I don't know if she likes it or not, but I call her the queen of quarters. You know, <laughs> she has an assembly. And when you see her shipping yeah. stuff going out, you're like, is this Amazon or is this a coin? <laughs> I mean, that's right. Like, right. She's right. making bank and she's got a, a process. And mm -hmm. I got into that. Pit. I'm also a full-time working guy. That's how I'm affording to invest in this business for myself mm -hmm. as I go get into retirement to have something going for me. And, and I, um, I, I, wanted, I want to make sure that you um, discuss that a little bit more. Um, so we want to save a little bit of that conversation. But yeah. go ahead and tell me what you want. I can talk about that in, in a minute. Like what, okay. But anyway, so um, uh, what, what did you ask me? Now I've totally forgotten. Oh, my bad. But I, I wanted to... I wanted to He's like Poof. retirement. It should be tomorrow. Retirement. But the, the thing was, oh. um, go ahead, go ahead. You can remember it. Go well, ahead. Yeah. So um, what I do with customers. So when I, when I got overwhelmed, I was like, Oh my gosh, I wouldn't say it wasn't fun, but it wasn't what I was kind of in for now. I think everyone has a different market. And, and like you said earlier, what's going to work for Dave out here in Newport beach is not going to maybe work. My buddy in badlands, we talk about how different his market is, you know, and, mm -hmm. um, here though, I can go, used to be able to, used to go to the little car show that we have right up the street here. There's a lot of guys that, let's face it, I live in a little shack down here by the beach, but a lot of these guys have plenty of disposable income, as they say. Mm -hmm. And I get to know them, they see my rings, I show it to them. They've gotta be finished. They can't be those ones that you hammered with them out. Like they want fine jewelry. Right. And, um, but when you say, when they say how much, and you say 180, If I, I'll tell you what, I'll throw in the, uh, the engraving, we usually I charge 10 bucks for that. They're like, great. They don't even care. You right. know? So, but that's me. Mm -hmm. But what you do is you pamper them. So they, right. you know, it takes me time. I'm like, what are you into? What kind of car do you got? Like, you know, a lot of these guys I did the Route 66 ring for, or they're mm -hmm. really, you know, they're Americana guys, you know, or they're, um, they, you know, I had a guy that was from Sweden and I made a ring for him. And then I, I it turns out his dad's from, uh, Iran. So I found an Iranian coin. So I really yeah. work with them, give them personalization. That added value they're willing to pay for. That's my market. Most definitely. Not Etsy. Etsy. I get on Etsy and I go, $80? Eee, I could do it for that, but I'd have to make a hundred of them. 
Mm -hmm. And so that's like a, that's like a pit, you know, that Etsy for me, I'm not, I'm not saying anyone on there beautiful, mm -hmm. but it's really competitive there. It is. And so I, I encourage you to look at your local market and make connections, add that added value. And I'm finding that people will pay for that, at least where I'm at. It might not work for everybody. Right. Most definitely. I, I want to um, acknowledge the um, chat um, as we go on. We got an active chat. We have Luke Doghouse in here. That's some loot coin art. Definitely um, one of my favorites. If um, Dave, you have to check out his, um, he cuts up the coin. Oh my gosh. Beautiful work. Up to 100 pieces. He cut some of these coins up wow. to. And um, some of the, his coin rings, I definitely watch his process as well. So, Luke, thank you so much for joining in. Um, Nick McLean, um, share your sentiments about Jamie. Say, Jamie is a machine. Most, she definitely is. I'm, I'm inspired by her, her process, and all the things she shares on her marketing and also her sales. Um, she definitely knows how to do it, and she oh, got to see a ton, ton of advice. So um, much knowledge and just so such a real, knowledge. such a sincere, real person. Like one of the people that yes. really helped me when I started out. Never, right. never didn't like text with me for 20 minutes about some nonsense. She's awesome. She is definitely is, and um, I remember she wanted, um, she taught me some things about. Um, spoons. I wanted to do. She made gold. this. This is my daily driver, and this is one of her awesome. rings. It's made from a little Rolex. Isn't that cool? Yes, nice. A little Rolex spoon. I don't know if yes. you can see it. I can and see I it. I wear it every day. Thank you, Jamie. I love this ring, and, and this is what I wear. One of the best, man. I tell you, I love. And she, I have one that I have at my at my station that I want to get done. Um, she told me, you know, give her a call, head up when I start because she wants to see the process. Um, we have Michael M um, in the house. Also, Dan Manley, thank you so much for coming in. Um, we have Nick McLean, Corn Hound, um, came into the house. Thank you so much. And also, Chris Bradley said he loves the show. Um, so, I just want to make sure I acknowledge the chat as we go on. Um, can you please? And we have Skip King still here. He said, I love seeing all this. This really is great. Thank you so much, Skip. I appreciate it. Um, tell me about the art, the business of corn rings. Now, this is when we get into telling someone, telling the, the, the chat about how to get into this, this craft, number one, and how much it costs. It starts off in a hobby. Yeah. And it started off with the mandrel and the, um, the um, hammer, mallet. You know, the mallet. I wanted, I'm looking for mallet. The mallet, but it wound up becoming a whole table full of equipment. So tell the process and how right. did you start? Well, first of all, let me say, I'm sure if I was this community, I'd be looking at me and go, is this guy just swimming in a pool of money that he can afford any tool? Like if I had all that crap, I could make, and I get it. But here's what I did. I made mm -hmm. a conscious decision to, to have a plan. My brother's a business guy. I, I don't think he got up early enough out here in California. And I do, I'm talking about 1.30 in the afternoon to watch this <laughs> because he's a dad and it's his day to do whatever. But anyway, my brother, Tony, is a, uh, is a business guy. And he told me, look, businesses don't make money in the first year. Here's, you need a plan, a business plan. Mm -hmm. And he goes, your first year, year, you need to discover that market, learn that craft because you're no expert on it yet. And he right. was right and lose money, but invest. And then your second year, hopefully you start breaking even, pay down that initial investment, which on these tools is high, especially if you go, you guys have seen the, you know, like I'm sure when you guys see a hammer like this, you're like, oh my God, yeah. does he really need that? My eyes. Let me tell you, let me tell you, <laughs> I love this thing. Like you just drop it and it helps your stamping. So all I, look, wow. one thing I will say, my experience of life told me, don't let the tools hold you back. Mm. especially if you're a little low on experience, if the tools are all perfect, at least you, anytime I do something and I screw it up, I can never say it's the tool. It's the tool me. It's right. not the tool. Cause I, so I took some money from my day job, you know, invested in myself mm -hmm. and I've been paying that down out of the profits and I'm not even done with that. This right. stuff is, but I'm getting there. Right. In fact, I'm ahead of schedule for the plan to be at that. So I encourage you make a plan, invest in yourself or just totally keep it as a hobby. But as you go through, do what gives you joy. Like when it got crazy for me and I was doing this with the rank, with the quarters, 
and, and not digging it and, and working too hard, that's when I said, listen, I'm going to focus on what I love, which is the big chunky rings, what have you. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, most definitely. And now going forward, it's like my brother said, he goes, next year, you're going to see, you're going to have a whole different philosophy. You're going to discover something. He's totally right. Mm -hmm. Like now I see the business, the business now is my sample box. This taking to jewelers to jewelry stores mm -hmm. and having a conversation with them, which I've done with a couple guys out here in Newport now. And I said to them like, well, would you sell my rings? And they're like, well, here's the thing. They have to be able to sit. Both of these guys said the same thing. One down here in uh, Laguna Niguel and one here right in Newport mm -hmm. said, uh, they have to be able to sit next to fine jewelry and look right. So that polish, that finish, that border, you know what we're talking about on that Aztec, yeah. like getting it right? Like you can't have some crooked thing. Because right. these are people that are going to pick it up and go, what's this? They're not going to put that next to a diamond engagement set. Like you see what right now Skyler's doing. Yeah. That's that jewelry quality. Now he's doing different things than just pure coin rings. So I feel like this is the future where I'd have a sample box like that. And I'm not going to tell you I've, got, I've closed one of these deals yet, but I feel mm -hmm. it's getting close where you would have it at your local jewelry store. People could come in and go, I'll pick that one. You'd have to be fast, you know. I told the jewelry store, I go, look, if you give me an order, I'll try to turn it over in a day and get it back to you because they're local. So right. people wouldn't have to wait weeks. So this is what I'm, this, this is where I've been. This is kind of where I'm going, mm -hmm. but I invested. Look, I, I get it. Like, you know, I, I saw that Skylar tool list that you looked at and it's a hammer and a piece of, you know, thing from Harbor Freight. And, and yeah. I totally get that, you know, right. but I decided to go another way and it's cost me money. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to recuperate that. I, 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 you know, but I don't want to be the offensive guy that's just got like all the toy Richie Rich or anything, you know. Right. I'm I understand. Not. I'm I, a working man. <laughs> and look, the same, the same here. And um, when I got, first got into this hobby, I realized that I would have to invest when I start seeing how well made other rings were starting to look, and I wanted to get to that level. Not saying you necessarily need that, but I think you do need it, um, um, really because. It, it definitely shows the difference when you look at um, now that the creators are using stuff like lathe machines. So what do you think about that? Moving from doing things by hand to now using a lathe machine to create your rings. Yeah. So one of the things I learned, uh, well, one of my idols is Steve Jobs, probably a lot of people. And mm -hmm. in many different ways, he said, stick to your knitting focus. Mm -hmm. I am not going to wander, right? And listen, everyone that's doing it, great. I would love to know how to do that. But right now, spinner rings, lathes, all of this stuff, I just want to take a flat disc, turn it as beautifully as I can into a cylinder, and, and have you have that magical experience of putting a, an unbroken ring on your finger and mm -hmm. love it. And I'm, wow. not, I'm not there yet. I want to focus on that. I'm a cold forging coin ring maker, and, and I plan on being that for quite a while because, believe me, there's plenty to do. Right. If anything, the new thing that I'm learning and discovering, and you guys have been following, is I, I am a coin ring maker, but why can't I make my own coins? Mm. So I've started, you know, uh, taking blanks. You know, this, this, is my, this is my lathe. I know I could have punched this better. These blanks. Mm-hmm. I can put my own image on that and then just use the same tools and techniques that we're familiar with if we're folding a Morgan. In fact, right. it's actually a little thicker than a Morgan. So I'm really focused on classic techniques. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you had an idea. You had an idea and you use your creativity to come up with something new. Now, um, I want to speak on what I've seen on your page, your IG page. Once again, I want to mention on Corn Ring Craft on IG, you took a coin, a brass coin that we all recognize um, once we, we follow the favorites, right? And you took this and you did something magic to it. Can you explain that? Yeah. So funny story about this. So I got one of these. I just bought one. And they were brassed, and at least out here. And and Chris uh, from I think he's still on Iron Punch Forge, if I'm getting there. Lion Punch Forge. <laughs> Lion Punch Forge. Uh, he uh, 
he pointed out to me, and I think copper is a beautiful material, but out here, if I give a brass ring to somebody and I go to the car show next week and, and one of these big guys is walking up and be going, my finger's turning green. I'm toast. I'm done. Yeah. Like these cats do not want green finger. They're not 14 anymore. And so I can't do I love this, but I can't do a brass coin. Mm -hmm. So I was like, how can I get this beautiful pattern onto some sterling? And I just realize that when they use rolling mills and I, you know, I'm the guy, I'm like the, 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 uh, the, the bumblebee that doesn't know he is not aerodynamically sound, <laughs> you know, like an engineer right. will tell you, you can't be in the air, but the bees like, Oh really? Cause he right. doesn't care. I'm that guy. Okay. So I saw, I'm putting two and two together and getting five, you know, whatever. But, uh, I saw that you can take leaves and put them on top of, um, this is why you have to watch all the different stuff, but in a rolling mill on top of silver, and it'll leave an impression. Right. I'm like, well, hell, if a leaf will do it, what would this do? And, and right. I, I asked you guys what you thought would happen. Some Everyone was like, do it. <laughs> yeah, right. sure, it's, it's my money. <laughs> but, right. But, you know, I was going to do it, and it came out amazingly well. In fact, yeah. this is the only coin I have, and I would say I could use it again. Right. So I mean, it made a beautiful blank. I already actually made the ring. Let me see if I got it here. Um, maybe you guys saw it, but man, I got to say, I don't think you can see these, but it's got all this beautiful detail on it. And uh, I redid the edge. Uh -huh. So this is really exciting. This is another level. Let me put it up again. Let me see. Can I get it clear? Nice. It's on my page. Go check the but, page. Uh, there'll be more, but this is just, uh, by the way, I really like this kind of halfway shape too, but halfway between say fat tire and, and straight wall. It's kind of becoming right. my new go-to, but anyway. Um, so then I went over to Jason's site this morning. I'm like, I got to order five more of these discontinued. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> this was the last one. You're like, get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Do you think he saw it, Jason? If you're there, I invited him. I don't think he's he's got stuff going on, but um, he is one of my idols. Yeah. But um, anyway, so yeah, he discontinued him. Maybe he saw. No, you can't do that. I'm taking that down. But I don't think so. Jason's such a good guy. Yeah. I mean, this is like a new way um, for us to grow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that they are really into seeing a progression of what we're doing. Um, yeah. So. What mark do you want to leave on this craft? Well, so uh, talking about Jason and Skylar, it makes me think like none of us, I honestly believe this. There's not one of us here would be here if it weren't for them. Most definitely. We'd be doing, I'd still be making paracord bracelets. You want to see some? Because, <laughs> yeah. And they, people bought, you know, they liked them, but no, yeah, it wasn't I'm like this. Some now. <laughs> right. I like them. But uh, Jason, Skylar, uh, Fence Kid, um, you know, and of course, discovering people like, uh, I'm looking down at my list because I don't want to forget some people uh, like Jamie, like seeing, wow, she's a going concern. Like before I knew I'd do it, you know, I saw her site before I decided to actually go at this as a business. Oh, wow. Well, because I could see, she, you know, she's making a living, exactly. you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, then then you look at people like Stacy Lee Weber. Remember yeah. that name? If Have you checked her out? I have. Dude, that's other level. Yeah. That's it, fine art. Yes. Museum, so museum quality. Museum quality. And we're on a continuum. I invited her. I told her, oh, my gosh, I would freak out if you, but I know. But, mm -hmm. but um, she, she's responded to me a couple of times, but yeah. that is beautiful. So we're on a continuum with them. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, you know, Jason's really focused on the tools and now he's doing his, he, he's birthing lambs and doing his trail stuff. And I know he still loves coin rings, but yeah. he, it's like him and he and Skylar, you know, Skylar wants to do his ministry and, and, and other things. And, and, and now he's doing fine jewelry. Mm -hmm. Now it's, I think, our turn to stay in this lane of coin ring making, but take it to the next level. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to add to the knowledge we have, like making coin. And I am that bumblebee, so I don't know what we can't do. So I'm trying mm -hmm. stuff. So the mark I want to leave is try stuff. Right. Create. like, um, And then I'll shut up. But like the difference between an artist, to me, and a craftsperson mm -hmm. is an artist gives some emotion, right? They share something of themselves. 
a craftsperson is chasing perfection. They're just chasing perfection in, in doing something. How can we get that emotion into coin ring making? We don't design the coins. Right. Putting someone's initial on doesn't really give any emotion. But when I take a blank and, and start to design a pattern, and I, I'm not there yet with it, that's when I can start to put some of myself into the work and still use the classic techniques of coin ring making. So that's what I want to build. Like, how can we put artistry into it, but still be classic coin ring makers? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good a point. Because I think the point, we talked about this before. We kind of like mimicking each other. You know, we'll take a coin, we see one, and what we would do is go and try to create that coin. Or we, we, I say, Dave did a great job on that toonie, and I want to go do the same one. The point you just made was, when will we step out of that line and create something different? Something that is definitely genuine and original to us. And maybe someone can look at it and say, hey, let me try that. You know, and it's all about perfecting that look, getting a chance to make that ring. But when will we get an opportunity to, to really become coin ring originators? Right. Just like I look up to Skip and other coin ring tool creators because they look at something and say, I can make this process better. Yes. So I love those guys. You know, uh, Neil over there in England, he's such a character and he, mm -hmm. he has those uh, wall straighteners or a version of them. And uh, they're very expensive to buy here. And then he makes them out of Delrin. I love that Skip looked at that and said, well, I'm going to say it, you know, maybe a little American ingenuity. We can take this up a notch. Mm -hmm. And so he's using nylon. And that's what I was waiting for. I was sitting at home going, man, I wish someone would make this out of nylon and then also make it in the U.S. where you don't have to pay an $85, you know, extra fee just to get it shipped over here. And mm -hmm. sure enough, Skip does it. So those guys are the geniuses that are supporting us. But yeah. then how are we going to take it to that creative level? Like what, like, you know, Stacy's way out here, right? But look at the <laughs> yeah. creativity she's using. Man. Oh, man. From Making the pendant, hammers out the of coins. Hammers. The, oh, teapot. The, I'm everything. He's making hats, everything. <laughs> I'm like, I'm looking like, how does he do it? Yeah, you know, well, the coins on another level. Yeah. yeah. And, um, Skip um, definitely made a comment that I wanted to stress. He said, um, hey, Dave, what is the common size for the blanks? Uh, well, I, I obsessed about that because, uh, and if Dave, it, Pepe Tools, if you're listening, he has these these things that it's either, and I tried to get him to make one that was friendly just to coin ring makers. One and three eighths is nice. It's it's a, a little bit smaller than a, it's like a Kennedy half size, okay. you know, so it's a nice size. But then it's one and three quarters. That makes this monster blank. I made one ring for from it, but I'm probably not going to do too many of those. Okay. Unless uh, Shaq orders a ring from me. <laughs> a size because 23. then you're doing a lot of a lot of <laughs> Swedish rap, if you know what I'm saying. Like right. Eighteen dollars of monster tape later, you might have it down to something someone can wear. Right. Um. So, but I so there's three of these. I ordered the one. Um. It's uh, the one and three eighths and the one and three quarters. The number on it is one nine six point four zero Peppy Tools. Okay. And it's on my it's on my page too. Uh, if you look at it, um, of course Dave has you know and they're they're starting to listening to uh, to listen to coin ring makers. I love that Dave uh, and Pepe Tools, Chris, uh, listened to Skylar on making the new plate for us and the yes. the new ring. So maybe we'll get some of these tools that are a little more friendly. I'd like a one and three eighths and a one and a half. Yeah. That would be a That'd little be better. And then I can jump over to the regular, the one you did a review on, the regular Pepe Tool disc cutter for quarter size. Cutter. So one inch is, is okay there. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. So those are the sizes. It's awesome. And Dave, this has been definitely been an honor. I definitely appreciate you bringing all this info, what's going on in your channel. Let, tell the people in the chat where they can find you. Yeah, so... Uh, I'm trying to expand. I, I've had a lot of people ask me to do YouTube, a YouTube video. So I may be doing that in the future. So stay You're tuned. Awesome. I would definitely link it off of JT because 
uh, you're amazing, but it's Thank fold, F-O-L-D underscore coin ring. That's my ring menu. If you got a family member you want to buy, go there. And then the learning site for makers for us to show what's behind the scenes, how the sausage is made, so to speak, mm -hmm. is, um, is coin ring craft, all one word on IG. Got you. All right. So this right here, this part of the, the show I do is called a speed round. Everything is on the top of my head, so I never write it down. I just want to make sure that it's um, fresh and kind of takes us off um, a little bit. So the first question out of this was, what's the first book that you've read that changed your perspective on life? Oh, gosh. Uh, probably, it was probably The Lord of the Rings. Okay. A Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. Yeah, the way... They worked together. They had this epic quest. I read it as a very young kid. Um, yeah. Awesome. Okay, peanut butter or pizza? Oh, God, a crunchy peanut butter or pizza? Oh, man. <laughs> Why you got to do me like that? It's probably pizza. Okay. You was a, um, a sailor. Yeah. You know, um, what branch did you um, serve in? I was in the Navy. Yeah, was in the US Navy. Navy. Thus, the anchor is uh, right. always on your rings. I, right. I knew it was a connection. I knew it was a connection. Oh, man. What's the uh, fa most favorite place that you have traveled on recently? Not this Ooh. year, but recently. Yeah, I haven't been traveling recently. Um, gosh, I, you know, I still love the city by the bay, San Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, it's just such a beautiful town. And uh, every time I go there, I discover something new with food or art or just going down to the bay. I love San Francisco. And you can go over to Oakland. You can go over to Berkeley. It's just a great place to go. Mm. If I say this person's name, Jason Stinchfield, what do you think? Oh, wow. I mean, he is, first of all, I think a, a model of humility and grace and knowledge like you watch him for five minutes and you love him he has that magic you know i'm in business and i i'm like he has that magic of personality but he can he can tell he can lay it down to you but awesome. I, he's just an amazingly humble and wonderful guy awesome um what about jamie from midnight joe oh jamie is also just uber kind knowledgeable and focused you talk about focus mm -hmm. that's one of the things i picked up like you can tell she has her plan and you know when i'm famous for giving unsolicited advice <laughs> she would always say hey I, I know myself and she would always say nope i'm gonna say steer back here but that's where you're having an honest dialogue and i love that about her mm -hmm. she's honest she's focused she's talented and she's like an uber woman she's amazing Awesome. Skylar Jenkins. Yeah, Skylar is um, Skylar is somebody that I have amazing respect for his compassion for people. Mm -hmm. Like the minute I watched his channel, I realized that he was thinking empathetically toward people making coin rings. See, Dave Russo would have got up there and said, you need a million dollar press. You need this. You need that. But he was like, look, you can take a beer can and a piece of wood that you find in the yard. I mean, he made it accessible. He made coin ring met, uh, uh, making accessible to so many more people. Yes, he told you, you're going to need this from Jason. But mm -hmm. then you can also use these other things from Harbor Freight. And I right. just love that he's empathetic. You know, that I think is his Christian spirit. You know, I know he it, it said on your show mm -hmm. that he wants to focus on his ministry. And I, I it, it seems like a perfect gig for him. Yeah. You can, you can tell from his... His, his, just the way he carry himself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely lovely guy. Um, I'm going to go down Fence Kid. Oh, my God. That guy is so fun. Like, when I watched his videos at first, I was laughing so hard. And what I loved about it is his uber confidence, mm -hmm. his confidence and his just, like, laying it down for you. But still, you love the guy. He's like, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a ring in two minutes. I'm tired of people whining. Beep, 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 beep. And there it is. And you're like, okay, Fence Kid peace out or whatever he says and you're just sitting there going what just happened to me right i love that guy yeah i definitely miss him um i did I check out some of his um videos that he made this year mm -hmm. but he was talking about he was talking about making bread and um 
I left a comment. He was like, later, guy. <laughs> oh, really? You know, so I haven't seen any more corn ring videos, but I, I, wanted, I want to know if he knows what impact he has definitely made. Um, I think he does. He's starting to become like the uh, – have you noticed a lot of people are talking about him now? It used to be sort of Jason and Skyler. Now you hear, but wait, wait, what about Fence Kid? Anyway, yeah. didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, you definitely have to like um, put him there for one of the influences. Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely do. The um, founding I'm, fathers. I'm, yeah, I'm a couple others as well. Um, today's time that I definitely don't want to not talk about George Floyd. What do you think about that? Well, you know, uh, I know there's so much pain in the black and brown community in this country right now. And I would just like to say, my heart is breaking with yours. Especially seeing what happened in Atlanta, that this is still going on. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, my heart is breaking with yours and anyone that doesn't understand that, uh, block me mm -hmm. you know i'm cool with that yeah, so anyway sorry but that's uh these it's are heavy times these are heavy times like we're sitting here uh you know talking about making rings and and doing art and you know there's a building on fire right here next door and so something we can't ignore definitely yeah, can't ignore can't, right yeah at all but when we when we sit down and think about these times we have to connect as people and we have to look at that, that purest sense of a human being, something that's not being judged by color, where a person lives, how much wealth they have. And opportunity like this, time like this, for me to sit down and talk to you, a person of a totally different race, a totally different demographic, coming together and we can, we can, we can share ideas and find common grounds is what we have to do as human beings and in the earth. My mom always tell me there's only one race is a human race, and we got to learn to love each other. So I just left want to end with that to get your perspective on it, and I appreciate um, your honesty. No problem. Can I just shout out a couple people? Most definitely. Okay, so my 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 friend Emily, happy birthday, Emily. I think this is Big 30. Uh, right. Emily, I told her I was going to shout out her birthday. She is single, by the way, beautiful okay. single. And she said, uh, well, at least they'll know how to make me a ring, but they need to know it has to be gold. So they're going to have to make it a gold <laughs> coin. So if you've never done gold coins, you got to start practicing that. All I right. also want to just uh, shout out my friend, Crystal. Okay. Uh, Crystal, I, I told you I call her the warrior princess. Uh, she wanted to connect with her Aztec history. So she, she saw that Aztec coin. She's also helped me develop a lot of those little thin stackers and stuff that women like a lot more. I call her my you know new product development person because she's so awesome. But she wanted to connect with that coin and she goes, yeah, can you do it in size five? I'm like, what? wait. And then she just looked at me like, <laughs> and I was like, yes, because <laughs> think about that coin in size five. And uh, she wears it and she's just amazing. And then I want to thank you. You, what you're doing to promote our connection is is just above and beyond. Thank you. I love you, brother. I think you're you did all the work here, you know, and I really Thank appreciate you, so you. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And I want to make sure that we made Emily's birthday special, so I'll put that on the ticker. Happy birthday, Emily! Thank you so much. Um, I hope you enjoy your day to the fullest. Guys, thank you so much for joining us on another episode of Corn Ring Talk. Please check out, there you go, Dave from Corn Ring Craft and Fold Corn Rings. You can check him out on um, IG and soon to be YouTube. So look forward to that, man. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon, my friend. Thank you have you. a wonderful day, okay? Yeah, thank you all. All right, take care, guys. All right, guys, I want to make sure I end with this. Um, is give me a second because I want to make sure that um, I show support to a good friend of mine who has a wonderful YouTube uh, channel. It's called Spook Spacey. Um, I want you guys to go check it out um, when you have an opportunity. Um, you're definitely going to love this. He's one of the most talented people I know in the YouTube community. Okay? So you definitely want to check this out. And here he goes. Hello, goblins and goblins. This is Spook Spacey, the newest host of the oldest movie. Tell them the other things we do to wrap up. 
I'm flying. Here's a sneak peek of some of the shenanigans that are going to go on in between the movie breaks on the new Spook Spacey channel. What's your name, Private? My name is Spook Spacey. Private Spacey? I don't like the name Spacey. Only actors and sailors are named Spacey. <laughs> a pizza pizza. Place in the order now while it's a scolding hot. Now that's a spicy eyeball. You're under arrest, dirtbag. Grandpa Balls, you know that I am Chief Saint Millennium. You are hurting my feelings. But Spacey, when this DeLorean hits 88 miles an hour, we are going to see some serious. Rampa Bones, the only way a DeLorean can hit 88 miles an hour is if it's going down a mountain on ice. There's no time for logic. Let's go, quick. Spooks Basie is a brand new channel on YouTube. He hosts all these old weird movies. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> Oh, guys, that was Spook Spacey from my friend Red Hit Step Stacker. Go check him out. Guys, remember, create something daily, so you might as well start today. Take care, and I'll see you next week.